I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and loved to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Erin. I'm so excited to chat with you. Great to be here, Tanya. So give our listeners a little bit of a background on sort of why you chose this line of work. Yeah. So a little bit of background just in my work history. Um, so I, I help small businesses with their marketing. So lots of small businesses really struggle to keep a full pipeline of leads. And so I come alongside and help them develop a marketing plan and a sales funnel so they can consistently get new leads in as a result, new sales in their business. But, um, if you would have asked me like 15 years ago, if I was going to be in market or told me I was going to be in marketing, I probably would have laughed, uh, because my background is I studied art in college of all things, you know, every parent's dreams and their kids, <laughs> to a private liberal arts college of all things, just get an art degree. So um, that is my background. And really I studied photography mostly and had a whole other business. Um, I ran a photography studio for about 11 years. And in the middle of that, uh, pretty early on, I discovered that I actually loved business just as much as I liked the medium of photography and photography really just became my tool to be in business. And so in that process, fell in love with business, fell in love with just the creativity that running a business requires, um, the, the constant problem solving, the, the constant like adapting, um, things are new all the time. You're trying to kind of figure out how do you make this work? And to go from an art degree to running a business, you can imagine there were quite a few gaps that, that had to be closed in the, in the learning and education to, to get that figured out. And, um, so in that process, uh, further into to my years running a photography studio, I ended up working with a lot of small businesses in the context of the, the work I was doing, doing with photo work and um, loved, just saw the need, the gap that these, these small businesses had in figuring out their marketing. So I was helping them with a visual aspect of it, headshots, you know, uh, custom stock photography for websites and social, those sorts of things. But it became evident really, really quickly that that was this tiny piece of a much larger puzzle that they needed help figuring out as it related to their marketing. And so I had, had already sought out some training and some things I was doing to, to grow my own business and began helping these clients and going, Hey, I can actually help you with this part too. I can help you with the words. I can help you with the marketing strategy piece um, and not just the images. And so over the course of several years, that sort of morphed into what I'm doing today. So no photography anymore. I, I uh, call myself retired. Occasionally people pull me out of photography retirement, but um, now work uh, solely with uh, small to mid-sized businesses, helping them uh, with their marketing and help them figure it out in a way that one is works when they get results, because a lot of marketing is actually a waste of money, um, time and money, as well as helping them figure out and get a system that works for the kind of business they want to build. Um, because unfortunately we hear, you know, gurus online and all these sort of tactics out there and yeah, some of them work, but not every tactic you hear is going to work for your particular business. So if you're not clear on what's the business I want to build and what's the, the, process or the plan or the tactics that will help, help me get there. There's this disconnect and things, things get, 
get kind of weird. So, <laughs> and they don't, they don't work like you want them to. So that's, that's my background. That's a little bit of my story of, of what got me to today. Well, and I want to talk a little bit more on, you know, you had mentioned why most marketing is a, is a waste of, you know, of time and money. And, and I hear that a lot. And I feel that a lot too, as you know, as a business owner is like you had said, you, you listen and you hear so many people online that are, you know, this is how many times you have to post, and this is what you have to post. And this is what it has to look like. And, you know, there are, there are days, you know, even myself that I sit down and I'm getting ready to do social media and, you know, I, the thought of my Instagram, Instagram grid, like it's like nails down a chalkboard for me. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that there's a lot of other people that are out there that are like, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It um, just makes you want to sit in a corner and cry. You're like, we do it. Do we have to do this? Yeah. yeah. Well, and part of it too, is like, I'm not a picture person. Like I think afterwards I'm like, that would have been a really great photo for social media, <laughs> you know, but it's all dispersed yeah. and it, or it doesn't exist or whatever the animal has walked away that I was like, that would have been a really good shot. (laughs) So let's talk a little bit about what you mean by that. And then maybe can you give us some tips that people can, you know, sort of help them overcome that, that overwhelm. Yeah, totally. So when I say that most marketing is a waste of money, there, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, The primary reason is actually most marketing messages, the words that you're using are unclear. You think that they're clear. Um, to, they're clear to you. You understand your business. You're in it every day. You see the backside of it, but you have this curse of knowledge, right? What is everyday normal to you, your customers really don't, they do not see what you see. And so if you are speaking in, in your marketing messaging, whether it's your website or social, or even a sales call, you're in a, in a one-to-one conversation with somebody and you're using inside language, or you're being unclear of, you know, what is the product or service you're actually selling and how is it going to make your customer's life better? And how can they get it? If you're not really, really clear about those things, they're tuning out um, and they're not hearing you and you're, you're losing. Um, um, you're you're wasting time and money on um, activities and efforts that don't even connect with your client to begin with. So that's one piece is a really unclear marketing a unclear marketing message, absolutely waste of time and money. You will not see a return on your investment. The other piece of the puzzle, though, is I often see, and I see this with small businesses mostly, is that we look, and and I think I mentioned this earlier, but we look online and we kind of hear the gurus and we hear people talking about, oh, well, you need to be on this platform and you need to post this number of times a day and you need, it needs to look like this. Well, what I tell clients all the time is maybe, but don't just assume that just because it worked for somebody else, it's going to work for you. And the reason for that is, they're not building the same kind of business you're building. Um, Their customers might be on a platform that your customers are not on. And so if you just kind of take it all hook, line, and sinker without evaluating what is the business you're actually trying to build, what what are your current goals? And then what are your long-term goals is, you know, are you building a brand? Are you building something you want to sell down the line? Like, what is it that you are trying to build and what you want it to look like? And that's really going to inform what um, your marketing should look like from a strategy strategy perspective is, um, do you need to be, you know, posting all the day? I, I think social media is kind of the easy thing to pick on in, in marketing, because that's the thing that I think most businesses feel really overwhelmed with, especially if you're small, like you're, it's just you, you're a solopreneur, or maybe you have a small team and you're going, I don't have a marketing department that can just handle that. You know, it's, it's all falling on, on me. And, I, rem- I, want to, I want to remind small business, well, all businesses, but small businesses in particular that find the platform, find a strategy that works for you. And it doesn't look, have to look like the business down the street. It doesn't have to look like the, the sm- smart, successful kind of quote gurus we follow online. What works for them may not be the right fit for you. Um, and don't, don't assume that it is just because it worked for them. Um, And social media is just that. It's a form of media. It's not a marketing strategy. It can be part of a marketing strategy, but in and of itself, it's not the end-all be-all of marketing. And you have to figure out, okay, 
what, what are the other options and where is my ideal customer client? How am I going to reach them and interact with them? And it might be social, but um, it actually may not, you know, like that may not be at all where your, your ideal people are hanging out. And if so, don't waste your time with it. So I think that's, you know, I think that's a really important message for people to hear. Cause I think a lot of times people feel like their whole marketing strategy needs to be around that, that social media, mm-hmm. as opposed to just thinking of it as part of a tool that they, you know, that they use. I know when I, you know, myself, when I'm, you know, looking up somebody, for example, when I got all of the information for you being on the show, I went to your social media quickly just to see, you know, okay, who is this person? Let me get an idea of it. But it all ended up driving me over to your website anyway, because that's where I I go to get the bulk of info, you know, information. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's important, important for people, you know, to kind of maybe put that back into a little bit of perspective and use the time that you have um, to, to market as opposed to trying to like rearrange your, your whole schedule. Cause I used to do that. I did that for many, many years, tried to, you know, make sure I had this many hours to sit and, and, you know, and then I realized I don't want to do that anymore. These are the hours that I have and I have to fit, you know, that work into that time. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I love that you picked up on and said, um, you know, any of the social media that I have, and, and let's be honest, depending on when you go and look at my social feeds, they, they may or may not be super updated or recent in terms of like, I'm not posting constantly all the time, but um, in the context of my business and what I'm doing, that's just a way for me to, um, to engage some, to, to show uh, content that is um, updated, you know, I'm still in business, I'm still around, like, just because, you know, you never know sometimes if you go to a website, like, is this old? Has it, how long has it been here? And so an active social feed, even if it's just a post or two a week can just help people see that, you know, you are active, you are in business, you know, you are engaging, but ultimately all of that social traffic is intended to send people back to my website. And this is what I recommend for any of the businesses that I consult with and work with is your website needs to be your most important. It is your most important marketing asset. And your website is what needs to be really optimized to, to capture leads and to convert browsers on your website into buyers. Um, so you can capture their information because, you know, as we know, in terms of social, the algorithms change constantly. The rules are always changing. We're playing in somebody else's court with somebody else's rules. Whereas if we can drive the traffic back to our websites, which we own, and we can capture those leads um, and get email addresses, names and email addresses, we own that as as a business. I own that. And so no matter what platform has changed the rules and, you know, changes, you know, how you can get in front of people and how easy it will be for people to to see your post. Um, If I own the email addresses, I can show up in people's inboxes. If I get them back to my website and have a way to capture really social is more Um, particularly with service-based businesses, because that's who I work a lot with, but social is really a mechanism to drive traffic back to your website, go back to your website, back to your website, and then have your site set up in such a way that it will, it can capture, turn those social followers into true leads that you can nurture um, by capturing email addresses and building um, a sales funnel on, on the back end on your website to capture and nurture those people into the sale. So let's talk a little bit about website then, because we're talking about the the importance of it. And and it's so funny because when, you know, when you had said like, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing with the website, which is like, you know, the mechanic never has the good car and and because you're so busy working on other people's stuff. But um, I think that, you know, for the listeners out there, let's talk a little bit more about, about the website. You have a great, how healthy is your website quiz. Um, Mm -hmm. which is free on your website, which you don't, it's funny that we were just talking about this, but you don't need an email address for, which I have to say was, was a very nice feature for me. um, Mm -hmm. Because too often you get stopped, right? It's like, take this free quiz. And it's like, give me your email address. And I'm like, no, (laughs) (laughs) Um, but you did it in a very interesting way. Whereas I got to take the quiz. I got the result 
from the quiz. And then if I wanted more information, I could put my email address in, which I thought was really refreshing, which by the way, I have to steal that idea because it, it did feel like then it was, you know, I got, I got the thing for free, Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, you know, the catch 22, but let's talk a little bit about that. I did take the quiz. I'm not going to give my results because they were not good. Um, (laughs) We'll have a sidebar, Tanya. We'll have a sidebar after the recording. But it's one of those things, right? That I look at my own website and I'm like, oh, I want to move this. And I don't like this. And I want to change this. It's just like finding the time to get to it. But um, it was really, really informative. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit. Cause I think that'll be really helpful. Yeah. So, so your website, again, going back to a really clear message, the words you are using, the copy on your website, the words you're using in conversation, written word, any of your marketing assets, it must be clear. And, um, I am a huge fan of using story framework to develop that marketing message. Um, if you happen to, um, story narrative story in marketing is, is talked about a lot these days. It's kind of made this sort of, um, I don't want to say comeback resurgence because it's always been around. The human brain is designed to respond to story. And um, when you can use a story framework to develop a marketing message, it means your message is clear, is all it means. Um, And we could dive into the weeds of that, but um, I follow a framework called the story brand framework, which is just a, a filter, messaging filter you can use to develop your marketing message. You know, it's clear. Um, But the words on your website have to be clear first. And the first place you start with that is the header of your site. So when you land on somebody's website, that what you can see on your screen before you start scrolling is what I mean by the header. And the header of your website should answer three questions. It should answer, what do you do? What is the product or service you sell? That should be really, really clear. It's amazing how many websites I go to and I can't even figure out what they're selling. That's a problem. Um, So what do you, what do you uh, sell uh, products or service, how it's going to make your customer's life better. So like, why should they care? How are you actually going to make your customer's life better if they choose to do business with you? Um, And then the third piece that that your header of your website needs to answer is how do you get it? What is the one next step they need to take? So this is the call to action. And you want to have a really clearly styled, style it as a button, um, I recommend putting one in the top right of your website and then put it again down in the center of the header or, you know, left justified from a design perspective. There's several ways you can do it successfully, but repeat all throughout your website, have a repeating styled the same way button that is your call to action. The one next thing somebody needs to do to move forward in doing business with you. Now, if you're selling something through your website, it could be a buy now button. That could be what it says. If you're a consultant, if you um, are an appointment-based kind of business, something along those lines, um, it could be schedule a call or request an appointment. Like you're not exchanging money yet, but it's the next thing that they need to do to to move forward with seeing are you a good fit and and are you... um, you know, do they want to work with you? And so those are the the first things and the easiest things that you could go to your website today. Words are easy to change, right? Really simple to change. Ask yourself the question, does the top of my website clearly communicate what I offer, what, you know, what I sell, how it makes my customer's life better, and do they know how to get it? Um, Those are the first three things that you can do. From there, there are other pieces that you can make sure that your website has. Things like testimonials are fantastic, a way to show social proof, a way to demonstrate authority that you have helped other people, um, you have solved the problem that you solve for other people, um, and you can use testimonials to do that. If you're a B2B business, you know, we've all seen the, you know, featured in media um, logos, or maybe it's logos of businesses you've worked with. That'll kind of vary depending on the line of work you're in. Um, But testimonials, logos, things that show authority are great. Um, You want to have a plan on your website, just a really simple three-step plan of how does somebody move forward in working with you. Um, We might think, let's say you have, trying to think of an industry that would be, like, let's say you have a lawn care company, okay? Um, Very obvious what you do. You 
you mow people's lawns, right? <laughs> you you right. keep your lawn looking good. Like it's, you know, it's not rocket science. That should be, should not be hard to be clear what, what it is that you do. And it shouldn't be that hard to go like, well, what, what do you do to move forward working with them? Well, sure. You just like schedule an appointment and they come to your house and they mow your yard and your yard looks good. Right. Um, it seems obvious and it is, but when you communicate it clearly in a three-step plan on your website, you're removing any fog your potential customers have with understanding what it's going to look like to move forward in doing business with you. So when you can outline a you know, schedule an appointment or request a call, you know, we're, we'll set up a time to, to, we'll make your yard look fantastic. And then you can have peace of mind, get your weekends back and have the best, you know, yard on the block, something like that as a step one, step two, step three, that helps people see how easy it is to actually do business with you. Um, and it makes the decision-making process for them to click that by now, schedule an appointment, whatever your call to action button is, makes it a lot easier because you're not making them do the mental work of trying to figure out what it would look like to move forward and what it would look like to work with you. So there's more that we could dive into, but those are just a handful of things that are really easy to change on a website and really easy to look at and go, okay, do I have all of these things um, that will increase how your the optimization of your site to really convert browsers into buyers when they land, when they land on your website? Well, and I love that that step process, because I think even with the lawn care one too, you know, there are times where you're like, well, I don't really know what service it is that I need, right? <laughs> like if you're yeah. not a person who takes care of your lawn you're like, I don't know. Right. <laughs> exactly. Come and cut it. I don't know. Like, yeah. Um, so I think that, that, you know, like you said, it, it seems, you know, and, and I think as business owners, we forget that to us, it's very easy. And, and, and I've experienced this a lot. Um, you know, in, in different businesses that I've owned is that when you're, when you're in it, it's easy. It makes sense to you because you're in that world, but you forget that the person who's looking at your site is not in your world, has no idea what it is that you're talking about. And so that, that then becomes the struggle of like, well, how do I figure out? I think I, I thought I was being clear, you know, mm -hmm. I thought, I thought I was, you know, being, um, um, uh, I thought that like that my wording was easy to understand, but it's easy for you, not for the outside person. Yeah, that's right. Really. So a good rule of thumb with a, with a website or any of your marketing copy is can a, can like a fourth grader understand, can they read it and at least be able to say, oh, I understand what you do. Now they may not understand the ins and outs, depending on if you're in a technical business or something like that, but they at least can communicate I get that you sell this or you solve this problem. Um, if you have a lot of inside language on your website, the stuff that's very industry speak, that is, you know, especially if you're in a, a technical industry or even in the consulting world, which is very, very broad, right? Like that could look like and include a lot of things. There's a lot of... It, uh, there's a lot about that world that is very soft. It's hard to get handles around what is it exactly that you do? What is the problem that you're solving? And so things like, oh, I can help you grow your business or I can help you. Well, but how are you going to help me do that? Like, what's the process we're going through to help me get there? And if you're not specific and clear about that, people just when we confuse people with our marketing, when it's not really clear, they're going to check out and, and they're going to, um, you know, con confusion is going to lose every, every day of the week. Um, and so we've got to keep, keep from confusing people, <laughs> um, yeah. and make sure that we're not confusing people and a great way even to make sure that you're not like find a friend, find somebody who doesn't really understand what you do and have them read your website, like look through your website, have them look through marketing copy and say, Hey, can you describe to me what I do? Can you tell me what I do based on just what they're reading, not what you've told them? Um, and that's a, a, you know, an easy way to, to have a, a measure on that, to know whether or not your, your marketing copy and your messaging is effective. I could do that with my husband. I don't even think he knows. <laughs> honey, can you tell me what I, can, can you, you tell, tell me, me what, what I, I do? do? Yeah. yeah. I love that. I <laughs> which love is bad, which is bad to say, but it's funny because it's funny when he just, when people ask him, you know, and he kind of goes, um, a few things. <laughs> right. Right. Good thing right, you right. pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the deal, Tanya, is we, we have to, if we're going to 
have an effective marketing message, we have to position what we offer, what we sell as a solution to a problem. And so if we can position it as a solution to a problem, I mean, even going back to the, the lawn care example, we know what lawn care is, right? Like it's not there's nothing super confusing about that. But if we say, hey, I get that, you know, most people don't want to spend their weekends out in their yard that, you know, they have better things to do. We'll take care of your yard so you can, your yard can look fantastic and you get your weekends back. So it's positioning as a solution to a problem. It's a time, it's a saving time problem in this particular example. Um, and when we position as a solution to a problem, one, it piques curiosity in the mind of our potential uh, potential buyers is they go, oh, I have that problem or I know somebody ha who has that problem and now you are categorized in their brain as the, the person to solve that particular problem. And when your marketing message is designed in such a way that it's you're solving for a specific problem, you'll see your your um close rate, your leads, your sales will go up um, when you when you do that well. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, so we've, you know, hope people are going to go, we're going to have the link for them to go and, and take the quiz so they can get their own, <laughs> their own score out of it um, and fix that. So when we have that and we have the leads and, you know, we're collecting the email addresses because, you know, as you have said, and, and as, you know, I'm sure everybody is heard so much how important that is to get, but then where do you go with that? Because I think a lot of business owners, you know, get stuck in that, you know, how much is too much. And, you know, because there's been lots of times where you sit in your own email and you, uh, you know, you get something and then you're like, oh my God, for the love of Lord, if I get one more email from this person, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm at like seven today, buddy, don't want to hear from you anymore. So right. how do, how do you, you know, and I know it, it's, it's so varies, but can you give us a general idea of where people should be thinking when they're getting these email addresses and reaching out? Yeah. Kind of the what's next. So what you're describing is, um, people need to build what's called a sales funnel. Um, so if you're not familiar with that term, all that means is, is you, somebody comes to your website, you give them something of value. So I'm guessing everybody who's listening to this has seen this. You go to a website, um, if it's an e-commerce site, they're probably giving you a code for free shipping or, you know, 10% off your first order or whatever. So those kinds of, those are lead generators is all it is. And so they're getting your contact information, your email address in exchange for the value they're giving, a percentage off, what whatnot. If you're not in an e-commerce, like, you know, shipping widgets and things, and you're more service-based, it could be more educational. It could be a checklist. It could be a quiz about, you know, how healthy is your website. It could, it could look like a lot of things, but it's some piece of content, um, some sort of education, something that's solving a specific problem for uh, this in alignment with what you offer and the, the services that you offer um, that solves a specific problem for, for these leads. And so they give you their email address, you give them a free PDF, a video series, format can look a lot of different ways. You've captured that email address. The next step is to develop a sales sequence. And so this is an automated email sequence um, that I, I kind of use a framework that has, that's about a six email sequence on the back end of, of downloading or getting access to whatever the thing you, you know, free lead generator you gave them. So you get their email and over the course of a week or two, it drips out, you know, five to six emails. After that automated sequence happens, then they go into what's called a nurture sequence. And that is what you're describing, Tanya, which is the things that you're sitting behind your computer and it could be scheduled out, but it doesn't just live and be automated. You, you create it once and it just lives and sends. This is the, I'm sending an email once a month, once a week, every day. It depends on, you know, what the, what the business is for that. And that's just a way to continue to provide value and nurture those leads, um, build trust, um, continue to help them get to know you and your brand. Frequency of that, which is kind of your original question, does vary and it varies by industry. So um, 
If you're e-commerce, as you know, if you get on any email list, you're like that sells, you know, e-commerce online, you're like, and this is the fourth email that I've gotten today. Um, I, I can't like no more emails. Right. Um, but most of your listeners, I'm guessing if they're service-based, um, consultants, so forth, really a weekly email is plenty, um, even you could probably get away with an every other week email. It, it really depends on your buying cycle. What's the sales cycle for your clients? Is it a long sales cycle where they really need to get to know you and build that know, like, and trust factor? Does that happen over an extended period of time? Well, you know, a weekly, a weekly email would be fine. A, a bi-weekly every other week would be fine as well. Um, unless you're in a launch of some kind and depending on your business model, and then you'll, you'll pick up the frequency during a launch cycle. And then you can go back to that every week, every other week kind of cycle. If you get to the every month, like just a once a month, um, for a lot of, for a lot of, um, brands, that's not quite enough because on a, every month, just once a month cadence, people will forget about you. And, and that's part of it. Like they may not open all your emails. They won't open your, you know, not every subscriber is going to open all your emails, but every time they see your name, your company name pop into your inbox, it just keeps you top of mind. So they don't forget about you, um, which is part of what you're trying to do is yes, it's nurturing them to a sale, but it's also just keeping you on their radar. So when they do need to solve the problem that your product or service solves, you're the person who comes to mind, your business is who comes to mind and they don't, you know, just go Google for something. Um, you, you already have, um, you're already on kind of on their Rolodex of, of, uh, solutions, um, that they could pull from to solve for that problem. And I think that's good because it's not as, you know, it doesn't seem as intimidating as, you know, oh, now this is like another piece mm -hmm. of, you know, of, of, of content or, you know, something else that, that I need to create. And we hear it all the time, like reuse what it is, you know, mm -hmm. that, that you're putting out there. But I think, you know, when, even before, when we were talking about, you know, social media and, and changing your thought on that and using that, you know, more as a tool and really putting your concentrate in concentration on items like this, these emails that are going out, because that's where your generation and, and the majority of your leads are most likely going to end up coming from not somebody who likes every photo. Like, you know, even with my own stuff, I'm thinking there's one person that likes every single photo, every single video, like every single thing I put out and has yet to buy from me ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and they've and they been don't. following me for like six, seven years. Right. And it's like, they might, but, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's just one thing that's never converted for some yep. odd reason. <laughs> yeah. I will not have to go back and ask them for their email address now, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and there will always be those people. Right. Um, and on social, sometimes it tends to be, um, the people that are following us on social, not only is it potential leads, but it's just friends. You know, it's the people who love us. They want to see us succeed, but they may not be our ideal customer or client. And so sure, they may like every photo and they may con comment here and there and say, oh, that looks great or, you know, whatever. But if they're not our ideal person, no problem that they're following us, but that number doesn't count in terms of, you know, you, if you know what I mean, like that, that yeah. number in terms of those followers, eh, they're, they're probably not, uh, they will, it's unlikely that they'll convert depending on, of course, it depends on what you, what your business you're in, but yeah. Well, and I think that, you know, I, I love this because I think it's, it's easy things that people can, you know, turn around and, and, do themselves, you know, <laughs> is look at their own website and assess it and go, does this really make sense? You know, can, because I think we get into that. A lot of people get into that fear too, of, am I being too simplistic? So you mm -hmm. see a lot of like, um, niche words or different sayings or, you know, and you're like, like you said, you kind of get stuck and you're like, wait, so what is exactly? And I'm even thinking in some of the titles that, you know, that I've used or mm -hmm. that some of my staff, I let my staff pick their own titles. I'm like, I don't care what you want to be pick it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I have like an executive secretary to the president and I'm like, who's the president? And they're like, well, she is. And I'm like, all right, like whatever, whatever works, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever works for you. But I think, you know, we get, you know, we get stuck in, I don't want, I don't want to sound 
I don't want to sound too simplistic because mm -hmm. does that not make me sound smart in what it is that I'm doing? And I think people confuse those two. Yeah, that I, makes I sense? think it does make sense. It does make sense. And, um, it's not that you can't be clever in your marketing. You can be clever as long as it's not in sacrifice of clarity. So as long as clarity remains and it's, it can be, can be clever at the same time, that's fine. But if it's clever and not clear, you're losing, you're losing customers. And, um, that's just an unwise business decision. <laughs> yeah. Know, clarity wins again, every day, every day of the week. So making sure that that, that remains. So if people are out there and they're like sitting there right now and they're like, yep, not my thing. <laughs> Don't know how to do that. What would be the best way for them to reach out and see, you know, how, how can I sit there? How can possibly Aaron help me to get these words out? Yeah. So I'll put some resources, Tanya, on my website. Um, it's the T H E acorn team.com, um, forward slash Fox talks business. And I'll put a, several resources there that your listeners can go. So I'll mention the resources now, but you don't have to remember them all just go to the acorn team.com slash Fox talks business. And I'll, I'll put links to them there. Um, if you want to just start with, okay, I just want to make sure my, my marketing message is clear. What are the words I'm using? Um, I mentioned earlier, the story brand framework, I'm a certified story brand guide. So cert, you know, certified and trained to use this particular framework, but there's a book out there building a story brand by Donald Miller teaches you the framework best 20 bucks you'll spend. Um, if you just want to dive in and get, get started. Um, there are also some live workshops that I coach, uh, that story brand puts on the workshops, teaching you the framework and I coach business owners through. So there'll be links on my website, um, for that as well. So you have are, one of those coming up in September, I believe. I do. Yeah. Okay. September 20, 20th and the 21st. Um, I'll be coaching a group of no more than 10. I keep it really small. So, you know, there's uh one-to-one -one engagement and, and help uh, helping you both. You'll learn through the live stream workshop what the, this framework is. It even gets into, we talked a little bit here, Tanya, about a sales funnel. What does it look like to build a sales funnel? Um, that is also part of the workshop. So both messaging and how to build a sales funnel. And I coach, um, I'll coach a group of business owners through that. So that's a great way especially if you're going, I don't have a full marketing team. You know, if you have limited resources, um, from an investment perspective, it's very, very affordable, um, to get into that. I also work one-to-one -one with clients where I do done for you work, right. Where I'm, I'm doing all their copywriting. We're working together on strategy and helping them develop their brand message. Um, I do that work as well. Um, I have limited, uh, calendar time for that. So I take on a limited number of projects, but, um, do that as well. So if somebody's going, yeah, I want to kind of learn and know, understand these frameworks and, and you know, what, what my marketing plan is, but I really don't have the margin or the desire to, to do some of the writing and, and content creation on my own. That is something that I help businesses with as, as well. Um, and contacting me through my website's the best way to best way to connect on that front. Perfect. And we'll make sure we link, you know, link to all of those. And then, um, thank you for, for putting all of those, those resources out. Like I said, uh, the, the quiz was, you know, an eye opener for some, you know, for some of the stuff for me. So I think that's a valuable tool for people to kind of just go in and, you know, and look out and you have a lot of other resources that, that are on your web, free resources that are on your website as well, for people to kind of, you know, start thinking of things maybe a little bit differently on, on how they're doing stuff and, and where they're really focusing their time when it, when it comes to, to marketing, because, you know, like we had talked through this whole, you know, through this whole interview is that people get stuck in what everybody else is doing, as opposed to going, what is going to work for, for me and who it is I'm trying to reach. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. This sort of like random acts of marketing, throw spaghetti at a wall approach and just hope something sticks is not, uh, there is a better way. Um, you can develop a plan that, uh, that's built for your particular growth goals as a business. And that's if, if there's anything I want listeners to hear is 
get a plan that works for the business you want to build, not the business somebody else is building. Um, the amount of relief you will feel when you get, when you get that it is significant. So, um, and I, I help businesses do that all the time and would love to work with any of your listeners who want to reach out. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me, Erin. And I have, you know, literally a page and a bit of like notes for myself. So I'm hoping, and I'm sure that our listeners got just as much out of it. So we'll make sure that we have all of the links to where everybody, you know, can, can find you and, and learn more about you and, and how they can work with you as well. Awesome. Thanks, Tanya. Such a pleasure having this conversation with you today. Well, I don't know about you, but I've got a lot of homework to do after this episode and speaking with Erin, both on my website and on just the way I'm communicating. So I want to thank her so much again for coming on the show and giving us so many great insights. I would encourage you to head over to our website as well for all of the tools. You will be able to find all of the links to her social media and her website at foxtalksbusiness.ca. Click on blogs on the left-hand side. You will see this episode and all of the ways that you can connect with her and just learn more and think differently about how you are doing marketing in your business. So no matter what you're doing today, make sure that you find time to have fun. Because as I always say, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?